Hey guys, what's up? It is Corey from Super Kami Guru 9000, and uh, I have something a little special for you guys today, something a little different. Uh, I wanted to review this brand new series that just started uh, this weekend on Nickelodeon. It is a brand new iteration of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and uh, if you guys have seen any of my previous videos, and if you just can't tell by looking at me, I am a huge Ninja Turtle fan. I always have been. I grew up with the original 1987 cartoon, the Fred Wolf cartoon. Uh, I'm now collecting the Mirage comics, which are incredible. You guys should definitely pick these up. They're really, really great reads. This is the original Turtle comics, and uh, I love all the movies. I even kind of like the uh, 2K3 series. It's pretty good. And so this will be the third cartoon iteration of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and of course some things are going to change and some things are going to be new. Now when I first saw the previews for this series, I was a little worried at first because I was like, oh boy, it's going to be some sort of weird CG animation, but honestly it's sort of a mixture of these like 2D backgrounds with these 3D characters, and honestly, the 3D characters do look really, really good. The turtles themselves, in particular, the animation won me over almost immediately, and uh, it was just great. But let's let's talk about the actual show itself. It opened up actually with the first two episodes of the series in the premiere, so it was like a big hour special. So it gave us a good chance to sort of get used to all these brand new characters. And first and foremost, we got the turtles themselves. You got uh, Leonardo, who is actually voiced by Jason Biggs of American Pie fame. You have Raphael, who is voiced by Sean Astin, who you might remember from movies such as Rudy, and even The Lord of the Rings, where he played Samwise Gamgee. We have the epic return of Rob Paulson. If you guys don't know who this guy is, he is a very famous voice actor. He actually did the voice of Raphael in the original Turtles cartoon, even Yakko from Animaniacs. Right off the bat, the episode opens up with a training sequence for the Turtles. We could see uh, Leonardo going against Michelangelo. Uh, Michelangelo, I don't know who his voice actor is. Uh, whoever's voicing him, though, it's very appropriate. He has kind of like a surfer-sounding voice, which uh, is cool for the character because this is sort of like a combination of all the different iterations of the Turtles. You know, you got the original cartoon, you have the comics, and they sort of just melded everything perfectly here. And uh, Michelangelo, of course, loses in this battle, and then you have Donatello and Raphael fighting. And uh, Donatello is great in this one-hour special. He's one of the most developed characters of uh, all the Turtles in this episode, which I think is great because a lot of the times, I think Donatello is kind of like the red-headed stepchild of the group. A lot of people tend to forget about him, but he gets a lot of top billing in this episode. But it doesn't matter. Raphael ends up beating his ass. We get the final battle between Raphael and Leonardo. And what I do like about the scene is you really get to see how all of their personalities are completely different. You get to see that Mikey is the really carefree one. You get to see that Donatello is the cool, calculated one. You get to see Leonardo is always by the books, and he's super, super, like, formal about everything. And you got Raphael, who just wants to beat the crap out of everybody. And he actually does defeat Leo in this battle. And then this is when we finally get into introduced to Master Splinter, and he has a completely different design this time around. But uh, you know what? I like it. It's cool because every single Splinter and all these different iterations of the comics, movies, and uh, TV shows, they always look different, and this one looks different too, but still he retains a lot of the qualities, in particular a lot of the ones from the uh, 87 cartoon because he's very stern, but he's very funny as well. This is also when we get our origin of the Turtles, which is told as a story uh, from Splinter, which is done in like this comic book style. It's kind of like the 87 cartoon, with Hamato Yoshi still being Splinter, and uh, all the Turtles basically just growing up with him, and they do establish that they are 15 years old. In this episode, we can see that the Turtles have been living in the sewers for a very, very long time. They've never been on the surface, and this is the chance where they finally get to go, and Splinter lets them go up and they get to explore. This is where the episode starts to expand a little bit on the universe, and it just starts to get a little more fun. We get to see a lot of firsts for the Turtles. We get to see them explore experience running around the rooftops, and we also get to see their very first experience with pizza, which I actually think is very funny, because the 87 cartoon is really what made the pizza and turtles thing kind of work, and uh, I just think it's really funny here, because you can see the first time Mikey actually tries the pizza, they're actually kind of afraid of it, and he eats it, and he's just like, his mind literally explodes, they do this little shot where they go into his head, and they show his mind, and they show his brain, and it literally explodes, I thought that was really funny. We're also introduced to another classic character in the first half of the episode, April O'Neil, and this time they have changed her drastically. Now, before April was usually just a scientist or a reporter. Now, she is a teenager. This is easily the most drastic change we've seen on this character, and uh, I think they just sort of did this so that they could put April kind of on the same level as the Turtles. What's really funny about this is Donatello is like completely smitten by April. He's like in love with her. He's like, this is the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. And Raphael's like, it's the only girl you've ever seen. And Donatello's just like, well, my point still stands. As they run into April, however, we can see that April actually has her father with her, but eventually they're accosted by this group of people in a van. It's those robots that we saw earlier in that flashback. And that's when the turtles decide they have to go down there and they have to save her. And that's when they have their very first battle. And it's really clumsy at first because they've never really worked as a team before and they're sort of constantly running into each other and bumping into each other. It's pretty funny, actually. They try as they might, they try to save her, but eventually 
eventually April does get kidnapped in this van with all these creepy robots. And an allusion to the original series, something that I think is really cool, uh, Michelangelo actually has the first encounter with one of the alien robots. Uh, he corners one of them in an alley, and he's able to defend himself with his other weapon, which is actually a Kusari Gama, which... At first I thought was, eh, they don't really need any extra weapons. But you know what? It's actually really cool, especially when they show them all using their weapons for the first time and Michelangelo actually uses his Kusari Gama. I, I thought that was really cool the way they implemented it. They discovered that this thing is some sort of alien robot and housed within its body is this weird brain creature. And uh, this is also, again, an allusion to the original show where Mikey was the first one to discover Krang, who was uh, the leader and he was teamed up with the Shredder. And none of the other turtles really believed him at first. And that's kind of what's going on in this series, too. And it's actually really funny how he's always trying to convince him and they just will not believe him. Eventually the turtles find this van that's leading to this other location where apparently these secret robot guys are hiding out and they find this one goon by the name of Snake and they use, sort of use him to get inside and this is where we first get our glimpse of what these weird kind of guys are. They're these sort of just robot guys with all these brain bodies inside of them and they're known as the Krang which is I'm guessing this is sort of a combination of the Utroms and the Krang and just putting them together. They're all like one singular entity as opposed to one single person. And uh, we can see that there's just like a whole army of them and they're really, really powerful. But the turtles have a great action scene with them and they tear them up. And eventually it gets to a point where they do get to save April, but they unfortunately do not get to save their father. But this is, of course, leading to another arc, I'm sure, all together. In the midst of all this crazy battles with the robot, that one other character, Snake, actually does get mutated into a mutant in this episode. He turns into this giant weed monster, and what I think is really funny about this is that Mikey actually names him, and he calls him Snakeweed. And this is great, because it's just... It's just like another villain from the 87 cartoon. So it ends with the turtles saving April, but unfortunately not being able to save their father. Donatello is extremely upset about this, and because he wants to impress April so much, he's basically putting up this huge front that he just has to save him. This episode ends in a pretty funny fashion, too, with uh, Leonardo asking Splinter why he asked him to be the leader, and Splinter told him it's because... Well, because you asked. Any of you turtles could have been the leader. And then Leonardo's like, even Mikey? And Splinter's like, no, not Mikey. That would have been an awful decision. The episode ends with a huge teaser, however. We can see that on the news, a lot of people found out about the turtles because they found their shuriken. However, on the other side of the planet in Tokyo, Japan, there happens to be a mysterious figure in the dark who is also watching this news as well, and he can tell where the shuriken came from. And if you're a Turtles fan, it's pretty obvious. This is Oroku Saki, the Shredder, and they're getting ready to build him up, and this is the very last shot you see in this awesome first hour special. So there are a ton of other things that I skimmed over. I didn't even go over the fact that uh, Splinter talks a little bit more about his past. Uh, we can see that he had uh, the same similar past with uh, Oroku Saki, where they both had the love of one woman, and then one of them ended up just killing the other. And also, Splinter in this series had a daughter, and uh, she was killed in this battle as well, which is actually pretty dark for the series, I have to admit. The character moments are really, really great in this episode, and that's kind of what makes this uh, series so great. All the turtles are just really, really fun to interact with. The art style is great, the action is great. The comedy, which I thought was going to be really grating at first, because, let's face it, the original cartoon wasn't really that funny so much as it was just stupid. This is actually pretty funny stuff here. I actually found myself laughing out loud a few times. It's like the perfect combination of every type of Ninja Turtle cartoon ever. And uh, it pays homage to everything. Like, even when they're in battle and they're actually, like, fighting against some of those, like, robot guys, uh, in their bandanas and their eyes, you can actually see that they're whitened out, kind of like they are in the original Mirage comics. And uh, I like that. I just think that's a nice little touch. Uh, all the animation is really smooth. All of the, the ninja stuff is great. The music is actually fantastic, in particular at the beginning. Uh, all the Japanese stuff, and even uh, the Japanese stuff itself, like Splinter actually speaks a few Japanese words, uh, so do the turtles themselves. When they address them, they say, Hi, Master. Um, so it's a uh, high sensei. So it's a uh, really, really great uh, attention to detail. What I can honestly say from my impression of this first hour special is that I'm really excited. Uh, obviously, this is a kid's show, and it's meant for kids, but at the same time, it's not dumbed down at all. It, it doesn't, like, play things out too much, and uh, it's just a really entertaining and fun show. And uh, I think if you're a fan of the original uh, 87 cartoon, or even if you're just a fan of uh, Turtles in general, I think you'll be able to at least get something out of this. There's enough funny moments for the kids and actions for the adults. Uh, all the dialogue is good. It's not, like, too stupid. And uh, it's just a really well-animated show. It's a great combination of 2D and 3D animation. And uh, that's what I was most afraid about. I didn't think the 3D animation was going to work. But you know what? It works. All the voices are good. And uh, I cannot wait to see what the Shredder is going to do. So uh, this is it, guys. The brand new Turtles cartoon. Make sure and check it out on Nickelodeon. I believe they air it on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Uh, but it's really, really good. Check it out. And also, go out to your comic book stores. Buy these comics, the Mirage comics. They are awesome. 
Really, really good stuff, guys. So uh, for the first hour special, uh, out of a 10, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. Just really loved it. It was really good. Uh, it shocked me. I thought I was going to hate it. I thought it was going to be just really cheesy and awful, but I found myself really getting sucked into it. So uh, great stuff. I feel like a kid again. Fantastic, guys. All right, guys, if you checked out this new Turtles cartoon, how did you feel about it? Also, if you guys are just fans of the Turtles in general, tell me what you like about them. Well, who's your favorite turtle? You can let me know with your comments below. And remember, guys, as always, if you like this video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. That concludes this review today. Super Comic Guru 9000, out.